Hello friends, welcome back for another part in our pain series where we painfully make our way through this run. We're doing alright by now, it's only been a few cycles since the last video. Uh, if you are new here or if you want a refresher on the rules, here's what we have to follow. We have to play on the hardest asteroid, we have to play uh, on the hardest map, on the hardest seed, all this kind of stuff. So I don't actually have this up in front of me when I read this, so you just kind of get a slight recalling of this as I uh, throw it up here in editing. So there you go. Not a very smooth intro, but you know, we're playing a hard version of this. All right, anyway, let's get started. We've got a lot of stuff to do in this video. Um, first of all, I just wanted to mention all the small changes that happened either in the last video or since the last video, just so that we can keep on top of everything that's changed and I don't have to like go into immense detail every time we need to talk about it. So first of all, um, this center area was really getting too small. So what I did was just create a little opening with just a little water lock here just so that the number of uh, shine bugs that we have is not getting cramped. We have 182 of them, assuming this count is correct. Uh, it kind of fluctuates because I think they go down in the water and stuff like that, but yeah, 180 roughly. So we have a lot of them in here and they will eventually get unhappy if the room size gets too small. So I had to create the room, or rather make the room bigger. So the room is technically all the center, plus all the stuff we've dug out so far. So, yeah. Getting kind of a light show here, but there you go. So, yeah, we've got that. We need to also mention the schedule changes here. Now that we have access to water, I'm not having my duplicates go back and use the bathroom nearly as often. I just have a block when they start the day, so hopefully they use it right when the day starts, and then they can go out and start going to work. And they don't have to run all the way back in the middle of the day several times. So got that. Um, I also let all my stone hatches die, so we don't have stone hatches anymore because we really don't need them. I just have a couple of smooth hatches kind of plugging away, refining some copper that I find. So that is what's going on with our hatches right now. The boring stuff that I did in between is we're really starting to run low on our count of igneous rock. So I went through and replaced all the tiles in the base that were made out of igneous rock and put them either with granite or sandstone so that we have more of that to work with. Igneous rock is not something that's exactly very available right now on this map, so at least not until we get into the oil biome. That's where a lot of it is. And even then I'll need to cool it down before we start really moving it around a lot. So we're kind of far away from having more of that, so I just figured it'd be best just to conserve that as much as we can. And also, yes, I saw your comments of the morbs will not put out anything. Oh man, we need a shine bug in here. Let me grab one of them real quick. Uh, I did see your comments here about that and I did open this up a little bit more so that it have enough space to generate more oxygen. So yeah, we definitely need to worry about the slime on here. This is one of the harder things about this too is like my attention is a limited resource. So while I'm like way over here working, I can't really pay that much attention to what's going on in the center of the base. So I think a lot of what this video is going to be about is just automating as much in here as possible so I don't need to pay attention to it anymore. Um, and the things that I'm constantly having to do is get the eggs out of this room so these guys aren't cramped all the time. I was having to uh, juggle some hatch eggs and that kind of stuff. I don't have to pay as much attention, but if I already have one in the incubator here, I can at least move it over to the drowning area so it just spawns and dies immediately. So yeah, I want to get as much stuff automated as possible, and I also want to get enough things going that my duplicants don't have to worry about spending so much time tending to crops and that kind of stuff. I want to switch our food over to a different type. So we're going to do two things. Um, one, I want to start ranching, or rather uh, farming, this grub fruit. Uh, the grub fruit is actually very strong, but the problem is the temperature that's on here on the sulfur is still kind of high. We need to mine it all out. We might need to work towards that a little bit, but the thing that's more accessible right now, since we have access to water, is going to be blossoms. So I'm going to go ahead and get started on replacing a bunch of these tiles with the farm tiles so that we can put them in here. And also one of the achievements that we need is to research some mutated seeds and I want to start getting going on that as much as I can. So anything that I need a mutated seed from, I might just plant in here 
so that we can at least have it grow uh, in the meantime while we are trying to mutate it a bit from the passive radiation that's coming off of these shine bugs. So I think that's what we're going to do first is just replace these. The other big focus that we're going to do that I'm probably going to get started on now is so many people have told me to use ethanol cooling. I've never done it before in a video, and I figure we might as well use this opportunity to do some kind of different things. I'll explain more what that's about, but we do need a little bit more cooling infrastructure. I think we're fine with what we have right now to at least hold down the cooling for right now, but we will need to eventually transition to some other type of more powerful cooling. So in the meantime, I think I'm just going to put down some generators to uh, distill the wood down to ethanol since we're still growing some wood off of these arbor trees. So yeah, a couple little projects I'm going to get started on and we'll kind of check in after some of the replacements have been done, especially the blossoms. They're not that exciting. I just need to replace the tiles. Not really that interesting to watch. So we'll kind of do that. Uh oh, <laughs> of course it's bubbles. Yes. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I need to also get some rad pills going. This is something that people told me about that might be worth using in here because anytime we have duplicates going in here for some reason, they're probably going to start getting some form of radiation sickness. So I think I'll get that going as well so that they can have some better resistance to the radiation that's out there. So yeah, uh, we'll kind of start working on those projects and check back in a bit. Okay. First couple projects are pretty much done. The first thing is just getting our bristle blossoms up, which uh, I probably glossed over a little bit too much. The reason that we have a actually have access to this is because we mined out a temperate biome and sent everything back. And bristle blossom seeds will spawn in there. We did not previously have access to that. So there you go. Now we are working on bristle blossoms and mutating them. Who's starving? What's going on here? Why are you starving? No reason. I just need to go to the bathroom first. In the bathroom, thinking about chicken. Pretty standard. Alright, so we've got that, uh, and that's all coming up. The water that we have here is obviously going to run out at some point. Whoa, where did all these come from? Why are there so many over here? And they're tame. Huh. I don't know why all these are here, so I'm gonna have to move them one by one. Oh, by the way, I do have Azure bugs now, so... Starting to get some of the more fancy ones, so I hope the person that was asking for that is still watching, because uh, I did this all for you. You're welcome. Alright, I'll move those later. So we've got that. Um, we also are going to start our ethanol. So I just grabbed all the wood that we had, put it in these bins here, and now I'm just going to deconstruct the bins. We have some auto sweepers above here, so my duplicates don't really need to interact with this. So we could probably just do... Well, I still need to build the pipes, but... You know, you get the idea. We'll have all these fall in here. We'll probably eventually set up a more sophisticated system for this, but again, I can't really set up a very complicated shipping network that can distribute out to the parts of my base just because we don't have a lot of metal to use. So for now, this is the best we can do. Just kind of get it all in one big pile and have it fall in there. So there you go. The ethanol is just going to go to a little area down here, and this is going to be my big cooling setup for ethanol. Um, I'm going to start off with it being kind of small, and we'll slowly expand it as time, or rather as we need to, because we can't really push that many aqua tuners right now anyway. So all I'm going to be doing is setting up something like this. This is actually potentially a little bit more simple than uh, the aqua tuner and steam turbine setups. Let me explain how this works a little bit. So if we go into the database, let's look it up ethanol there. If we look it up, the number that we want to pay attention to is this. The specific heat capacity is like 2.4 something. More notably, when it turns into gas, the specific heat capacity is less. So the idea here is that when it recondenses from gas down to a liquid again, a bunch of the heat is just gone. Um, this is debatably like an exploit, but I also think like this is so easy to fix and literally every other liquid and gas in the game works like the, not this way. So this is the only thing that works this way. So I guess it's kind of intentional. I don't know. It's it's a weird setup here and that's the only reason that it works. But 
the way that it uh, gets set up is you basically set up a bottom chamber with some aqua tuners. So I'm going to set up, I don't know, just one for right now. We'll eventually expand this out to have a whole bunch of them. We'll probably just use this for the rest of the game. Um, so we're going to just have some ethanol kind of drift down into here. We do need to set up our typical, like, gas pump to get all the gas out of these rooms. But the bottom chamber is just going to be ethanol with a steam... Or not a steam turbine, an aqua tuner. Uh, let me get it built really quickly so that we don't need to worry about this anymore. You can build it out of gold amalgam just because it may get a little bit warm. Or we could just build it out of copper. I'm pretty sure we might be okay with this because you do get a bonus. It's 125 overheat temperature and the ethanol's boiling point is only 78. So I think this should be fine if it's just copper. So I'll just kind of, I don't know, scoot it over here in the corner. Sure, let's get rid of this one. Then... We just have some liquid on top here that we're going to be cooling. I'll just use ethanol for everything. Whatever. If we're going to get ethanol, let's do everything with ethanol. So I'm going to just set up a tank that's up here. When the ethanol boils, it will drift up here and then it'll recondense back down into a liquid. And that's where the heat loss happens. Um, so I don't know. We'll give this a try. I've seen a lot of people asking for this, so... Might as well do it. One of the things that we can set up to help the temperature exchange a little bit more is we can set up some temp shift plates like this that'll help share the temperature with the top and the bottom. And then this top area is just going to be a big pool of cold ethanol. Let's see how cold we can actually get this before it freezes. Uh, that's not right. I want to see the liquid. Minus 114. That is hilariously low. I don't think we're going to go quite that low, but... Yeah, just knowing that it's there, we can get this quite cold and run some pretty silly setups with it. So, yeah, let's get all this closed off again. And then we'll get our pipes for the ethanol to kind of come down here and run them into where they're going to be dropping off, which is just going to be a handful of places. I'll eventually open all this up too so that my duplicates can walk up here and work. So I will clear all this out in just a minute. But yeah, we'll just kind of have it come down here, drop into this tank, and then I'll use a gas pump to get all the extra uh, air out of there that we don't want. Because we really just want ethanol either in its liquid or its gas form. So yeah, we'll just set up something like that and I'll kind of keep building that out. One thing we're going to need though is for two reasons. We need more solar panels. Uh, we need to get more of those up if we're going to have a bigger cooling setup. Because this is going to take a lot of power both to run the cooling and to run the ethanol at the same time. So, what I was thinking for this uh, big pool of polluted water up here is we could use it to help cool down a glass setup and help it uh, cool the glass that we create. So, we get this set up, we could use all the sand that's here in order to build the glass, or rather make the glass. So we could just kind of set something up up here, and I'll just build it right next to this. And we can use this to create a whole bunch of glass, and since there's like a million billion sand here, and enough polluted water to cool it all down, I'm just going to make a lot of glass so we don't really need to worry about it for a while. So that'll be the plan for how we're going to expand these two. I'll get this running here in just a minute, and I'll get the glass set up going so that we can expand our power. Our power, I'm not exactly sure what the shape of it's going to be. Probably a panel here and maybe a panel up above or something like that. I don't know. We'll have to see. This is just a huge biohazard area. So I don't know. Yeah make it a big mess. So yeah, we'll just kind of work on that in the meantime, and I'll be back in a bit after all those projects either start up or we need to start something else. Okay, we have our glass set up running. We produced a good amount of glass so far, at least enough to get a couple of solar panels, which is all we need to expand right now. So let's do that. Uh, we have our area over here. My duplicants have been making and taking rad pills, so hopefully that will help minimize the amount of radiation sickness that's going to be coming from this. I can at least get one of the panels up outside of the room, so we can kind of wall it off here uh, once everything gets built. And then the top one, I think I'm just going to have to have duplicants work from inside here, which is unfortunate. Um, <laughs> this flashes a light through the wall here. Um, we are going to... Yeah, need to eventually get lead suits. So the good thing is that while we were digging around down here, I did see some natural reed fibers that were growing, or more specifically thimble reeds. Now that these have actually turned some over, uh, we'll be able to produce some suits, 
So I've been busy creating that for a little bit so that we can actually get into this oil biome and get enough lead to make lead suits. Uh, we didn't start out with all that much to begin with, so eventually I think I'm just going to turn this area into a big panel of lead suits so that my duplicates have to change into that before going in here. But for this trip, I don't think we're going to have enough power to do all that right now. And plus we're ready and why don't we just take a big risk and have duplicates run in here and start building that out. So uh, I guess I'll give my duplicates some time to do this because uh, it's going to take them a little bit to get over here. There's so many other things kind of competing for their attention. So we'll talk about some other things in the meantime. One of which is uh, one of the nice things about having bristleberries grow in here is the nymphs will all eat them. Or sorry, the shine bugs will all eat them. So that is something that's pretty useful. The fancy ones won't. So that's not like a foolproof solution here. We'll eventually find some phosphorite and if we can find some drecos that'll solve the problem. But the second thing I want to start adding in here are these sweetles. Uh, I want to grab a couple of them from over here. Probably not the ones that are going to die in a couple cycles. So I guess this one, we'll just wrangle it. And that'll help us grow food a little bit faster, which is pretty powerful on this uh, difficulty. So let's just go ahead and set this for Sweetles. Here we go. And I think just one. I'm not sure if I'm going to need two, but something like this is a pretty interesting setup. By the way, I do have lights in here because the... Shine bugs are just not reliable enough to grow crops with, unfortunately. Okay, now that this one's good to go, we could just, I guess, put a door here so that they could do it from underneath instead of having to go all the way around. So I guess we could do that. Um, by the way, the temperature over here is pretty reasonable. After mining all this out and pr uh, putting up the insulated tiles, the temperature is really not that bad at all. Yeah, still lots of radiation sickness going on here. I'm wondering if he's actually taken the pill. Nope. Uh, oh well. So if I just deconstruct it from the bottom here, we can actually prevent them from going in on one direction and just let them go in on the other side. So I'll just deconstruct this really quickly, and then they should be able to allow the shine bugs to kind of float down here. But we still do need to get this one up, so that'll be an adventure, because it is horribly radioactive in here. We'll see how much they absorb and see how bad it gets, so I'll try to just keep duplicates in there for just a little bit at a time. I wonder if actually they come in from this other side if it's less, because they'll pass like less through the... Oh, I guess it's probably just about as bad. Okay, never mind. Alright, so that should power up. I guess we don't really need ladders here. I'm not going to worry too much about that. Then we're going to need to deconstruct this one. But I don't have, like, a surplus of rad pills right now. They do take them once per cycle, and it does help. There you go, minus 100 rads per cycle. It kind of just gets, or rather, lowers how much is absorbed. Uh, so there you go. So, hmm, I don't know. I guess we should just jump in here and do it. So, there we go. I'll create some ladders so that they can get up and down. Actually, I don't even need to yet because I can build... This is all tight enough that they can actually build from standing down here. And then this ought to disperse our shine bugs a little bit more, get us a little bit more power, but we'll see how bad this is. Let's actually have them go through this side and not this one. There we go. Yeah, this will be an interesting adventure. We might have, like, mass radiation sickness after this. By the way, while this was going on, I definitely did turn off the ethanol distillers. Um, we've got a good amount of it down here, but we're not quite ready to turn it on, only because we don't have the power to push everything that we want to have up right now. So, yeah, that's why we're not doing that. Oh, the other thing that's not going to be great about this is the shine bugs can get stuck inside the solar panels if you're not careful. Uh, I might need to stop doing this. This is getting really bad for some people. Let's just prevent some of the people that are too sick from going in here. So you are banned because you are in bad shape. Get out of there. There we go. Yeah, this is a lot. <laughs> we are definitely going to be having some vomiting from this. So I'll get the rest of this up here and I'll just kind of ban one duplicate at a time. But eventually we'll get it up there. And then once that's hooked up, um, we won't need to necessarily produce any more glass, although I probably will continue so that we can at least warm this water up a bit in a way that helps us in more than one way, and then we'll kind of get it back into our water system. 
We'll grab the Sweetos, we'll do a couple other things, we'll continue the ethanol production, and eventually we're going to turn this whole ethanol system on so that you can see uh, how this all works. But yeah, this is a lot of power usage. You can see a bunch of carbon dioxide is down here now from the overlay, so lots of stuff we have to deal with. Could potentially move these carbon skimmers up, uh, but it'll eventually get dealt with, so I'm not too worried. So yeah, a lot of stuff to keep doing here. Okay, now that we have the panel up, this is what I mean about the shine bugs potentially getting stuck in there. Uh, and we're going to have some very sick duplicates for a little while, but I think we should be okay. We'll just have to start, uh, or rather keep up on not allowing any of, them in the, any of them in there. The two of them that were banned have recovered by now, so we're okay. But I want to get these bugs out so that they replace themselves with their own with uh, eggs before they die and don't diminish our population. If they do get stuck in there, um, they will not be able to create any more eggs. So this can be a little bit of a downside if you're uh, building like that. So just kind of got to remember to come back in here and get them out. So yeah, I just thought I'd mention that. All right, couple points of business here really quickly. One of which is we're going to take another duplicate. Uh, so I'm just going to take whoever's here on the left, which is our role. Can't build narcoleptic small bladder. Hmm, that's not great, but that will at least help. Okay, guess we'll just make you another farmer. Well, the machinery is interesting. Let's just have him be a, de a dedicated operator. I think that'll be useful. Yeah, okay. Hello, welcome. All right, we need to also get him a bed. So I think I'll just start digging out a little bit more of this and put them up here. Yeah, we'll just kind of throw them in there. There we go. We'll get one of the back beds. They'll get to that at some point. Also, uh, Nicola can't build his own bed or do any of that. So he's like, somebody build me a bed. Really uh, walking into this colony being quite entitled. All right. A couple other points of business is we have another achievement. Let's look and see what it is. There you go. We have finished our hatches refining metals for us. I think that I'm going to stop keeping them. Only because our metal is so rare. I guess it's better than what we have right now, but I will get into a metal refinery at some point. I'm also pretty sure that taming something once counts towards this. It's not like you have to have all of these tamed at the same time. So I guess I don't really need to care that much about these hatches anymore. They're, I mean, there's we've already shown that there's going to be a ton of them all buried in here. So I guess if worst, worst comes to worst, we'll do something like that. So yeah, uh, the other thing too is we can use this as coolant for a metal refinery. So I may do that and just get rid of these uh, smooth hatches, right? I'll just leave them in there for right now and let them kind of die off after a while. Let's get the rest of this copper ore out of here so that they don't eat it. Okay, we got that. Uh, there's been a big expansion of food here, so I'm trying to get as much of our food onto bristle blossoms as possible. Just so that I don't have to spend duke labor on our food anymore if I can help it. So we've got that. The other thing that we needed is if we're going to have Sweetles in here, we need to give them food. So I did grab some sulfur and kind of put them in some bins here, but I am also mining out a huge portion of the map that we're going to use our shipping, like, freeway to send stuff back through. That'll get us all the sulfur at least closer to the base, but this is going to be a project that takes a little while to finish up. Still waiting on the suits here. Duplicants just have too much to do right now, which is why I took another duplicant. I'll probably take a second one as well the next time a print comes up, so we'll probably take two in this one. We did have enough reed fibers for a few Atmo suits. We might even have more than that, but we don't have a lot of refined metals, so if we don't need it, like if we don't need a bunch of suits, I'm only going to make a few of them at a time since we are on a metal poor map. Since we're very dependent on water now, I'm going to need to fill this up pretty soon. So this is almost ready to be turned into regular water because it is getting warmer because of all the glass that we're pouring in here. I could actually probably turn it on now. So I guess once all the pipes are good to go, then we will get it. But just going to basically run the pipes down 
and over to the uh, new water sieve that I have that's on its own little separate network that's really just for refilling this pool of water. So once that comes up, we'll have a nice stream of water coming in here. And the next time this is gonna turn on is in about 10 more cycles, so I'm not too worried about it. Someone also said in the comments it was a good idea that I could just use this water geyser in order to warm up the polluted water up there if we don't have a lot of purpose for it, but we will be uh, using this for coolant for our metal refinery. So I think we'll do that soon, but again, we're, we're taxing our power system quite a bit, especially with all this ethanol that we have. We'll turn on this system before the end of this video, but yeah, so a lot of different things going on at the same time, but they're, uh, they're coming together and I think we're getting uh, more efficient with our usage of our dupe time right now. And they just need to finish up a couple projects and we'll be in pretty good shape. So yeah, just kind of keep going on that route. Okay, we have our metal refinery up. I'm just going to start up some errands here, but I wanted to point out for people who did not know, each one of these different types of errands will generate a different amount of heat. So when you send liquid into the metal refinery, it will put that much heat into the liquid and then it will drain the liquid out. So if I want to refine but not heat things up too much, gold is one of the best ones to pick for something like that because it's heat that it outputs is so much less than the other ones. So for any gold that I find, I guess I only really have like enough for 13 of these. I'll refine this metal and this will continue to heat up the water that we have here before we start to send it in. So I did disconnect the line that was going to be sending it back even though we just talked about it. But if we can heat this up a little bit more, that'll be better than sending it at this temperature because at this temperature, it will get deleted by the bristle blossoms eventually. And I am using this for a combination of like keeping the area cool and for uh, water for the blossoms. So I do still want it to be a reasonable temperature, but uh, if I can raise this up to like, I don't know, 15 or 20 degrees instead of two, that would be ideal. So I'm just gonna raise the priority on this, keep the metal refinery spinning and we'll call that good. Uh, the ethanol gener or rather cooler is the thing that we need to turn on next, but as you can see, I still need more ethanol. We may turn it on before this entire thing fills up, but just trying to get that out as much as I can. And just to also be clear, the amount of power that we're generating from this is still not enough to push everything that we have in our base all at once, but we will eventually need to replace all this water or at least consume all this water with something before this starts to become too big of a problem. But even still, this is pretty like good for how long this has been up and running. It's only risen by about 10 degrees in the entire time we've been cooling like this, and there's literally nothing keeping this AquaTuner cool other than the hilarious amount of material that's in here right now. So yeah, I could not be more impressed with this as a temporary solution for cooling. Um, definitely something to use if you're in a weird situation, I would say. So the only other thing that I want to get done before the end of this video is I do want to ship all this stuff back kind of put it back in there, see how many of these things we can have running at a time. But I do think that I won't be able to push everything all together. There's some radiation vomit down here. That sounds great. All right, uh, so yeah, just a couple more things to do here before we get this thing turned on. And then I think we're gonna call it a day for this video, but yeah. I don't know what to say. Okay, anyway, I'll be back. Okay, I know we said we were going to reveal whatever this was, and it's a leaky oil fissure. Not very interesting at all. I'm very disappointed in you, Hassan. Why did you show us this? You deserve all the radiation you have. Just kidding, good job. Alright, opening this door means we got ourselves another achievement. Let's see what it is, even though I just told you what it was. Um... I guess inspecting a ruin means that you open that door, which is weird. Uh, I would figure that inspecting means pressing the inspected button on one of these things, but I don't know. I wish there was a count of achievements. Uh, somebody on, somebody at Clay, get on that, because we need to know. Or we could just count. Uh, <laughs> that won't be very fun. 
All right, so it looks like from quickly scanning, we probably have about 30% of them, I would say. I don't know. We'll get to some of the more complicated ones here in a minute, but I just wanted to make sure to show every single achievement that we get. All right, let's take another duplicate. This is a quite good duplicate. Another Bubbles, wow. Uh, how about Troubles? There we go. Uh, what role is Troubles gonna be? Can't cook, but does medicine operating? I don't know. She'll just be in here to have fun. There we go. Uh, we should already have a bed, so that should be good to go. The thing that I think we're going to do for the time being is this is all entirely mined out. So we've got another shipment of stuff that we can send back to our base. Lots of stuff for grub fruit, so I think we're going to get on that next time. So all I need to do is set up what's going to be shipped. Whoops. And set it down to one. And why is this not doing anything right now? Uh, oh, it's on sweep only. <laughs> I thought I'd uncheck that. Maybe not. So yeah, we'll turn all these on. We'll get everything shipped back like we did at the end of the last video. Uh, yeah, and we should be able to get everything there. We'll kind of time it again to see how fast this is going to be. And yeah, we'll go from there. But the only other thing that I think we need to do, I do want a little bit more ethanol before we turn the system on. So I need to start this up uh, again now that I think that we can stop refining metals. We have a lot right now. So I'll just set this to zero and we can start connecting up the lines to get this sent back to the like regular water area for all of our bristle blossoms. This is also turned back on, so we will probably be doing something a little bit different with this next time. But we did get a lot of use out of this. Uh, there's a lot of copper here, about 4,600 kilograms, so that's a pretty good start. All right, so right in time to refill all of our water. Yeah, we'll get our grub fruit up and everything like that when everything gets shipped back. And let's give it just a few more cycles to fill this up a little bit, and then we'll turn this on and we'll kind of see how it works. All right. 20 cycles later, we have made some progress on shipping. We're about to get it to the end of the chain. This is a lot more material than last time, so it's taken us a little while longer to get it here, but we're getting it. So I had some recommendations to put some weight plates to figure out how much was sitting right here. So we're at 150 tons of stuff right now. So we'll see how much stuff can get shipped over here in about 20 cycles with the setup that we've got. Just need to turn on one last thing to get this started, and I just wanted to see what we were starting at. So we'll kind of let that run and see how quickly we can get however many tons of material moved in however many more cycles. So we'll see. The only other thing we're waiting for right now is our ethanol to finish up. I am just going to fill this up all the way, uh, and then we'll get this thing started and we'll see how it works, and then we'll call it good. So we'll be there in a minute. Okay, five cycles later, we have moved a silly amount of things in those five cycles. We started out 150 tons, we're at 829. That is like 670 something tons moved in five cycles. So yeah, lots and lots of stuff there. We did turn on our ethanol cooling system here. So I think what I'm going to do is uh, this will eventually boil and it will turn into a gas. Once that happens, uh, we will see the change in temperature up here at this top part in the ethanol. So the cooling effect should happen from this recondensing down into another gas. So I think what I'm going to do is just speed this up really quickly so that we can see this happening. So I'll put this on full speed. And we will uh, kind of let this run for a bit, and I'll just make a fancy little edit here.
Okay. There you go. Uh, the temperature inside this top tank is definitely dropping, as you can see over that time lapse. The bottom half is remaining the same, because that's just kind of what this does. If it boils, then it comes up here, it gets condensed, falls back down. Yeah, so if this is holding steady and this is cooling, then we're effectively getting cooling because of the condensing and uh, heating up of this ethanol down here. Um, I will stress that this is less efficient than the typical combination of the steam turbine aqua tuner, but the upside of this is it doesn't require plastic or steel or anything fancy like that. This is literally just copper in this aqua tuner. I don't think that we'll ever get to a point where this is too hot and the copper is going to start getting damaged. If it does, we're going to have to replace this with like gold amalgam or something like that. But uh, we're still really not close and I don't see a reason why it would ever reach that hot. So yeah, I think we're going to be fine. Uh, but I don't know. Oxygen not included has some weird stuff when it comes to like simulation and whatnot. So who knows? All right. So anyway. I think that is good for this video. We have ourselves a cooling setup, which means I can start getting rid of our other one, which I've already started to deconstruct a little bit. All this material that's in here can eventually be cooled down and uh, sent back into our shipping system. So there you go. Uh, yeah, just kind of wanted to mention that. We need to start getting our ethanol circulated here pretty soon, just because we're going to start running out of cool water and this is going to be not really super under threat because this is already pretty cool right now with what we have. Uh, we have some other means of cooling this if we're really worried, but I'm not, so I think we should be fine. So yeah, uh, I think that's going to be it for this video. Thank you very much for watching and thanks for the recommendations as far as things you'd like to see in this run. The ethanol cooling especially was something I have not talked about before, so it was good to put it in this run rather than just kind of doing the same thing over and over. So this is, there's definitely more efficient ways to do things. There's more efficient ways to get oxygen and whatnot. I could definitely hook this up to like an electrolyzer or something, assuming we had enough cooling to push it. But I think we're going to play around with this a little bit in the next video. Kind of see what kinds of setups we can get. So yeah, we'll, we'll kind of see what happens with that. I don't really know exactly what else we're going to be targeting in the next video. So I'll probably sit down and plan this out a little bit and see where we can... Uh, go from here. So yeah, oh, we're also definitely going to start entering the oil biome, which we have done a little bit, but getting lead suits up and all that fun stuff will also be on the docket. So yeah, I think that'll be it. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next episode, hopefully tomorrow. We'll see if I can get it up in time.